Okay, here we are, self-publishing book online. We've been talking about this for the past 12 weeks. You're going to be like, Dale, when are you planning on letting up? <laughs> it's not going to be anytime soon. There's so many options that I want to make sure I share with you all of the uh, choices that you have. And some of them, you know, uh, you may have not heard of before. And there's a good chance you might have not heard of StreetLib self-publishing. We're going to be talking about that in today's podcast, so make sure you stay tuned. What's happening? This is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. It's episode 74. 74 weeks running strong, baby. And I'm just tickled to death that you took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing books. And we're going to talk about something I consider very promising right now, and that's street lib self-publishing. Before we do get into them, I want to let you know that today's podcast is exclusively sponsored by Archangel Inc. Archangel Inc. is the premier done-for-you full-service self-publishing services provider. That's a mouthful. Their, their goal is to make the self-publishing process streamlined and simple for their clients while they handle all the dirty details and dirty work of production and publishing from cover design and editing to ebook and paperback typesetting to audiobook production and ghostwriting. Archangel Inc. is designed to make the process as simple and turnkey as possible for authors and businesses to professionalize their written work and focus their energies on their highest value work. To take a look at why I rave about them, I use them for my interior typesetting for ebook and print book. I also have used them for my cover design. I'll be sharing that in a future video on my YouTube channel. If you want to see why I rave about them so much, take a look for yourself. Go to dalelinks.com slash archangelinc today. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash archangelinc. And let them know that I sent you on over there. So the problem with self-publishing a book online, it can be so overwhelming. And I want to make sure that I'm breaking this down into bite-sized pieces and that's why this makes the 13th week in a row that we've been talking about self-publishing a book online and specific avenues that you can utilize it in and uh, rather than trying to overwhelm yourself with all the details of every one of those avenues there's something that's called aggregate publishing and aggregate publishing works like this you essentially upload your manuscript to a given platform and they publish it to various other channels on your behalf. In return, they typically either have a subscription-based service or like what we have today, where they take a percentage of all net profits through each of those individual channels. Why is aggregate publishing so nice? Well, you've got one dashboard as opposed to dozens of different dashboards. You've got one tax form as opposed to dozens of different tax forms. So aggregate publishing can sometimes be really easy. And this was something I shared with Maddie Dalrymple over on her Indie Author podcast. We talked about aggregate publishing. And the thing that I try to tell people is aggregate publishing removes all that extra tedious work. If you're a new author and you don't have much of an audience, it doesn't make much sense to nickel and dime your time uploading to each one of those individual platforms. Because herein lies the problem. What if you've got to upload your manuscript, uh, update it? Let's say there's a misspelling or you have a paragraph that was chopped off. Guess what? You've got to go to those dozens of different platforms and update every single one of those manuscripts. It's just a pain in the tail. And until you're otherwise real experienced in this business and have somewhat of a following, aggregate publishing is probably for you. And this is why I'm so excited to share with you today an avenue I'm just starting to learn about. It's called StreetLib. Now, full disclosure, I'm just curating the information today. I'm just kind of DJing what I've found so you can kind of pick and choose what you feel like resonates with you. I've never used StreetLib before. I'd actually just briefly saw them about two years ago when Pronoun Publishing went out of business. It was a Macmillan company uh, and uh, essentially they just pulled the plug. And I was using them for distribution to Google Play Books. So I started looking at different uh, options. Book Ricks was one of them. Publish Drive was who I ended up going with. And then StreetLib. For whatever reason, I just didn't go with StreetLib. I can't remember why. Um, I thought, well, you know, maybe it was just one of those cases that it just didn't have a migration tool at the time like Publish Drive did. Who knows? Because if I saw what I see now, I there would be no doubt I would be going towards the StreetLib platform. So, and I'm going to share my honest thoughts when we come to the very end here. 
Here's the really cool thing. Um, the Alliance of Independent Authors, uh, I've raved about them oftentimes. Uh, they are a nonprofit organization run by indie authors for indie authors. They have a watchdog services program, and essentially they vet out different services and you know uh, companies and such to you know pretty much protect you. Look out for your, your best interests. And guess what? StreetLib has an excellent rating, and they are actually an active partner with ally so that speaks volumes in advance as soon as i saw that whew, breathe a sigh of relief i'm like okay okay we can we can do this one here dale so in their words i'm going to just quote them here on their website publishing is a global affair distribute your ebooks audiobooks pod books podcasts online literature comics and magazines in any language with street lib no upfront Ooh, easy for me to say, no upfront fees option for authors and small presses, subscription model available for larger publishers. Now, I didn't dig too much deeper into the subscription model. I imagine it probably functions much like uh, Publish Drive does, that if you plan on uploading you know, multiple books and such like that, rather than, say, them taking 10% of your earnings, you probably pay so much upfront. So I honestly just didn't dig deeper into that because I know a vast majority that are going to be listening to this are probably interested and in, or going paying anything up front. This is what I discovered about StreetLib. Oh gosh, you heard all the things they support. It is really just absolutely huge, big, super, super wide reach and all of the different specific models. So, you know, any events sake of brevity okay i'm just going to focus on the three things we're most interested in so if you're interested in doing magazine comics podcasts things like that then chances are pretty much likely that you know you're gonna to have to go look yourself and see what those options have to offer i'm gonna look at ebooks print books and audiobooks so let's start out with ebooks the distribution is to over 50 online retailers digital libraries and subscription apps reaching over 250 outlets and over 50,000 consumer points worldwide. They offer free ISBNs, by the way, and this is good for all of those. So I'm not gonna even repeat myself on this one. If you need free ISBNs, they've got your back. If you got your own ISBNs, guess what? They're like, cool, bring it on here. So um, here's the really nice thing. I have something like a program, it's called uh, Ready, I think is the name of it. And uh, with the Ready app or whatever that they use, they uh, can convert your document, your Word document into an EPUB file. So that's kind of cool. Or if you want to, you can just copy and paste over into the um, into their, their Ready app. So any event, um, I have not had the chance to toy around with it or play with it, but um, I would recommend go in, open up a free account. You can always just test it out for yourself. The specific types of files they said they accept are EPUB and they really emphasize EPUB because they strongly recommend that and for many reasons because EPUB is readable across most all devices and you know across almost every major platform. Uh, they will take Mobi, PDF, and iBooks um, with their royalty model. Now it varies per each one of them. For the royalty model, it's 60% royalty. Now you're probably going Oh, dude, no, 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 no. I can get 70% over on KDP. Like, why would I want to go that way? You know, um, again, it's aggregate publishing. So StreetLib actually takes 20%. The other ebook stores take 30%. There are exceptions to the rule. So Google Play and Kobo are a great example of being exceptions because they have a static model. It's like you do percentage, this much of a percentage through here and StreetLib's still gonna take their 10%. So just know that it will always be 10% minus also the percentage that each one of the platforms you know distribute to. So that's why it's 60%, but you gotta read the fine print for each one of their avenues. They've got a great directory of all of their distribution channels and what they offer, be it ebook, print book, and audiobook. So you just wanna make sure you read that fine print because then it says sales commission. That sales commission means what's that platform taking from your royalties altogether. Print books is the next option. Uh, they actually have 12 trim sizes with black and white and they also have full 
color. Um, I found the full color option kind of interesting because they said if there was like a full color picture inside your book, uh, leave the rest of it grayscale, meaning black and white. I don't know if they're doing a different type of offset publishing that they can do specific pages that are full color and ones that aren't. I, I don't know for sure. I'd have to actually order something from them to find out. Um, but when it comes to the royalties and how they do it, and speaking of, their format that they take is PDF. You're actually going to have an interior PDF as well as a cover file as PDF. That's pretty much the same across almost all print-on-demand distribution platforms. Um, Taken from the, the paperback sale, 51% goes to the store. So whoever's selling it, they take 51%. Street Lib, again, takes 10%. And then you minus any kind of print fees. Now, that's probably muddy to you. You're probably saying, I, I do, what, 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 what's my royalty? It, it varies. Unfortunately, it varies based on how large your file is, you know, how many pages you have, things like that. Are you using color or are you using black and white? It sounds to me almost the same model you're going to expect on most print-on-demand distribution platforms. They do have an online earnings calculator that you can go in, type in how many pages it's going to be, the type of book it's going to be, and they'll tell you kind of a rough idea of what you're going to expect for, um, you know, profits. They have very strict and very, very specific guidelines for print specs. So you don't want to go into this rushing into it thinking, oh, I can just go ahead and, you know, it's like ebooks, easy peasy, I'm done. You know, wash my hands of it. Read through it. But each one of those makes sense. And if you're experienced, if you're at least intermediate when it comes to publishing books, then their print specs aren't out of order. I looked at it, I'm like, oh, that all makes sense. Like 300 DPI. Okay, makes sense. If you don't know what I'm talking about 300 DPI, then chances are pretty likely you may not want to utilize this avenue just yet. Um, audiobooks, here we go. Distribution, it's pretty good, pretty good. And rather than me naming every single one of those avenues, I can tell you the main ones are Audible, Storytel, The Narrator Store, Google Play Books, BookBeat, and many others. They have so much distribution. Some of the ones I recognize through some of the other avenues, like Find Away Voices. Find Away Voices is not available through uh, through StreetLib. So I found that very interesting. Published Drive uses Find Away Voices. Heck, even um, Authors Republic uses Find Away Voices for distribution. This is a platform I didn't notice Find Away Voices at all. So they're fulfilling all that that distribution. So that's pretty interesting. Um, something worth considering. You can bring your own narrator or StreetLib will actually give consultations for the options that would be available to you. So it's not like an open marketplace like it is over on Audible Creation Exchange or Find Away Voices. You're going to have to actually consult them. Uh, the specs are exactly the same. When it comes to audio specs, it's the same as Audible or what you would upload to say uh, Audible Creation Exchange and ACX. The royalty rate varies per distribution channel. The one part I really liked is StreetLib actually has their own platform and they only take 15%. So that means you get 85% of all your sales. Oh, sign me up. I like that model. Um, you look at each one of the avenues and just see, because generally speaking, you're going to get 20% to as much as well, 85% in this case for distributing your audiobooks. And then there's subscription-based models that aren't necessarily percentages that you're dealing with. You're going into like a subscription pool of some sort that will pay you out. Alrighty, uh, there are other miscellaneous things, including they actually have a mobile app integration. So if you end up setting up an account, you can always download their mobile app and keep track of your sales, all of your you know publications, things like that through the, their mobile app. That's new, I guess. They have done-for-you services. So for instance, you feel lost, you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. You can always reach out to them. They're happy to help you out. Obviously, this doesn't come free. They are going to probably charge a premium. And they have other resources if you want to end up doing it yourself. It's totally fine. Their payout methodology, they pay out monthly. And it'll be the 30 days after the close of the month. Now, remember, they're an aggregate publisher. So that means that they're bringing in sales from an avenue. So let's say Amazon's one of the avenues that you're utilizing. Well, when Amazon is done, Amazon reports those sales 30 days after the close of the month to StreetLib. 
So when it shows up in Street Lib's dash, it'll be 30 days after the close of that month. So it can be a delay of about 60 days before you even see some of the sales from the different channels. But again, kind of nice. I would rather wait. That means that I don't have to go to each one of those platforms. Uh, some stores like Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Tolino, 24 Symbols, Overdrive, Scribd, Barnes & Noble, Libreka provide sales data with a month's delay. For example, they only receive data about your May sales at the end of June. For this reason, your May sales in this store can only be billed at the end of June. You will thus receive the payment for these sales at the end of July. So that's what, exactly what StreetLib did to they explain things. You can get paid a couple different ways, through PayPal or Payoneer. You have to have a $10 minimum threshold or through a bank transfer and you need a $30 minimum threshold. Already, um, I'm gonna give you my final thoughts when it comes to street lib here. But before we do, I think I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again till I'm about blue in the face. It is my absolute mission to impact 100,000 authors and self-publishers lives in the year 2020. And here we are, we're about a few months at the end of the year and I'm super tickled to know that 38,000 people have entrusted me. They've trusted me enough that they have subscribed to my channel over on YouTube. And I think one of the best ways to really track everything, instead of trying to count every one of my podcast downloads or subscribers, I'll send you on over to my YouTube channel, dalelinks.com slash YouTube. You subscribe today. It's one way to let me know that I've helped you out in some capacity, whether helped you publish your first book, helped you tweak your keywords, helped you in getting more money per month, whatever it was, even if I just helped inspire you, come on over to my YouTube channel, dalelinks.com slash YouTube and subscribe today. We're on our way to 100K. Do you wanna be part of the 100K sub club? Come subscribe right away. All right here, so is Street Lib worth it? Well, I can tell you this, unlike last week with Book Ricks, the jury was kinda out on that one. This one I saw right away, I am really, really excited because their reach is stellar. They got a lot of reach, like it's huge. I, the only time I've ever seen like reach like that, that's typically over like an Ingram Spark. And Ingram Spark's been around for a number of years. Their royalty model is comparable to their competitors. So uh, it might be a little lower than some, but some of them it's a little higher. You get what you pay for when it comes to going through aggregate publishers. So the mere fact that they just take 10% for distribution, I find it kind of reasonable. The distribution, again, everything in the kitchen sink. Ebooks, audiobooks, print books, oh my, podcasts. Um, yeah, I'm gonna probably see about reaching out to them about distributing my podcasts from now on. That's pretty exciting. Um, is Street Lib worth it? I believe so. I believe so, yes. In fact, if you are more interested, this is not an affiliate link. I'm just gonna send you on over to streetlib.com. Take a look at them. I wanna know what you think about it because I'm really excited about it and I'm gonna kinda of test them out and see what's going on and maybe I'll come back and just give a little bit of an update as time goes on. In the meantime, hey, could you do me a huge favor? Subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and leave a review and if you're watching me on YouTube, Leave a comment. Let me know what you learned in this episode that you didn't know already. Hey, next week, we're diving into yet another aggregate distributor. The name of them is Blurb. Yeah, like a book blurb, but the platform's called Blurb. We're gonna be diving into Blurb next week in the 75th episode here of Self-Publishing with Dale. In the meantime, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you folks next week.